Welcome to episode 26 of the Unstoppable Podcast with me, Dan J. Gregory. My name is Dan J. Gregory and I am committed to hunting down the secrets of business mastery and human performance. My goal for the Unstoppable Podcast is to share insights from some of the most successful entrepreneurs, inspiring thought leaders, world-class athletes and prominent celebrities to help you to become unstoppable in business and life. Each week I'll be bringing you a new interview with an inspiring person and sharing my own results as I pursue the answer to the question, how can I create the ultimate edge in my business, make a significant impact and live an extraordinary life. Welcome to episode 26 of the Unstoppable Podcast. I'm coming to you live from my balcony overlooking Lake Garda, a beautiful lake in Italy. For those of you who haven't been here, you must come and visit. To paint the picture, I've got these gigantic mountains in the background and this beautiful lake in front of it and these really rustic buildings lining the streets overlooking the uh, lake. It's a wonderful experience. The sun's out and up to this point, we've spent the last four days cycling from Innsbruck across the Italian border into Bressanone, and then from Bressanone into Bolzano, and from Bolzano into Trento, and then finally from Trento to Garda. And then even on our rest day, 50 kilometer ride around Garda, exploring this beautiful area. So what have I got lined up for you in today's episode? Well, I'm going to follow the usual format. I've got the quote of the week for you, which I will share a Italian proverb. I have the debrief from Vince Del Monte's cracking episode last Thursday. I've got my three takeaways that I'll be personally implementing following Vince's interview. And I'll be sharing my unstoppable insights today, five life lessons that I've learned from cycling through the Alps. And then finally, I'll issue you your unstoppable challenge for the week. So this is an episode I am literally sat by the road overlooking uh, the river, the lake, sorry, on the balcony. So you may hear animals, birds, cars, motorbikes, shouting cyclists, enthusiastic Italians, the whole shebang. Um, and I'm actually recording this on my mobile phone. Normally back at home in the UK, I have my, my whole studio set up with the posh microphone and proper editing software. Today, I'm just shouting into my mobile phone and I've downloaded a new application that I'm going to hopefully produce this podcast on for you guys. So let's jump into it. I'm going to attempt to read this Italian proverb as the quote of the week in Italian and then translate it into English for you. And the quote of the week is, Nulla si fa senza volante. Nulla si fa senza volante. And that means, without commitment, nothing gets done. Now, if you're Italian and you're listening to this, please do feel free to email, text, whatever. Tell me how to say it properly. I did do a little bit of prep before the episode and listen to someone else in Italian saying these words. And I may, over dinner tonight, ask our uh, service staff how to say it properly. But I really liked the proverb itself, without commitment, nothing gets done. And that is so relevant to our trip. We faced all kinds of curveballs, challenges, and resistance. And uh, you will find out about that in a section where I talk about the life lessons learned from the cycle through the Alps. But it's a beautiful quote, and I really like that as an Italian proverb. So let's jump straight into the debrief from Vince Del Monte's interview last week. If you haven't checked it out, episode 25, you must go and listen to that episode. It's one of the best we've had so far, one of the best guests I've had. Vince has got three quarters of a million followers on Facebook. He's got a quarter of a million followers on YouTube, 60,000 video views, an amazing following online. But he, not only that, he's got a spectacular business model, and he's really mastered the art of con high converting offers. And his interview, he would just didn't hold anything back. There were so many good golden nuggets. You know, I, I took pages and pages of personal notes, but I selected my top three takeaways that I'll be personally implementing. But if you haven't listened to it, go to Unstoppable Podcast forward slash Vince Del Monte. You'll find it on danjgregory.com as well. It's just an amazing episode, and Vince is such a humble, honorable guy, and uh, he really, really laid down some powerful wisdom in the hour that we had together. So here are my top three takeaways. Firstly, focus. I'm not just talking about focusing on the task in hand here. I'm talking about focusing on your audience. Vince gave a really great tip about doubling down on one core marketplace and solving one major problem. 
And how do you decide what that problem is going to be? Well, in Vince's discussion, he talked about his own personal story of transformation. You see, Vince, back in high school and university, he was known as Skinny Vinny. He was very, very slim. He was very good at endurance activities as a result, but he was very, very slim, and he dreamed of having muscle. And finally, he found a mentor that could help him to add muscle to his body. And the transformation was prolific. And he followed the advice of his mentor, which was contrary to much of the advice found in a lot of the bodybuilding literature that he had previously read. So through his own transformation, he has then gone on to focus 100% on helping skinny guys to add muscle, sharing the principles that he went through on his own personal transformation, how he overcame his own struggles and how he finally overcame those struggles to produce a body that he's absolutely proud of. And trust me, check him out. Go to see his website, Vince Del Monte. Look at the links on the podcast. Um, you'll see how stacked this guy is. And his, his own business model now is the art of living large. And, you know, he's certainly mastered the art of adding muscle as a skinny guy who's now no longer a skinny guy. But the key thing is he now teaches people how to add muscle, how skinny people can add muscle. And that's challenging. Trust me, I'm an ectomorph. I'm a slim guy myself. But the lesson I'm taking away is looking back at my own story of transformation, my own story of struggle, and reflecting upon, if you've listened to the first 10 episodes of this podcast where I share my own transition from corporate, my corporate job into my entrepreneurial journey, where I had three years of real struggle once I left my corporate job, despite having all the skills, the contacts, the abilities, it was my own self-doubt, my own fears that held me back and held me trapped. These limitations, self-imposed limitations I've had to overcome, often brutally overcome because of this, the mind works in a peculiar way. You know, fear is meant to keep us safe from danger. And, you know, we've had plenty of hazards on this cycling trip. And that's where fear is supposed to kick in to stop you from having physical harm. But it is not supposed to stop you from experiencing your own greatness. So... Reflecting on the episode with Vince, it really made me think about my own transformation. And my own transformation is really that inner game. You know, I've got big visions about what I want to create in my business. But what I'm really going to focus on now is helping those people out there who have these massive visions. They want to create businesses. And it doesn't matter if you're already successful and you've hit a level six, seven, or even eight figures. There's often something inside that's holding us back from getting to the next level. And I can tell you, I've been there. I've been there three years of struggle. It's ridiculous. You know, the first 10 episodes of this podcast were the most cathartic thing I've ever done. Looking back over those challenges, you look back and think, what was going on? But I've overcome those challenges and it's now, the foot is down on the pedal and it's go mode. So if you're listening to this podcast and you're struggling in your business or you're struggling to reach the next level in your business, I'm here for you. I'm going to be sharing the inner game to overcome these inner challenges, whether it's fear, limiting beliefs, whether it's expanding your vision, I'm here for you. And I'm going to be sharing some amazing content over the, over the coming months, helping you specifically overcome these inner game challenges that prevent you from achieving the life and business that you freaking deserve. So that's step one. Hopefully that's clear. Double down on your audience, pick your marketplace, and solve one problem and solve it really, really well. Number two, obviously I've spoken about Vince's audience. He's got a large audience. It was really interesting talking to him about audience. You know, I was asking lots of questions how he's cultivated this large audience. Now, now Vince has this audience where this uh, network, sorry, where he, he, it, comparatively he has a small audience to some of the peer group that he holds. But he spoke about the importance of creating a high converting offer. It's all very well having a very large audience, and he does have a large audience, certainly compared to, to, to myself, you know, over a million plus um, followers. That's just, to me, is, that's next level, but, you know, I'll get there. But the lesson was it's not about followers, it's about customers. And he talked about some people that he's got in his network with multi, more followers than he has. He spoke about an individual who had 2.5 million followers. And he still has to have a job to pay the bills because he hasn't found out a way to monetize his audience. So it's not about the volume of followers that you have. It's about the relationship that you have with your followers, a targeted audience solving a specific problem, and creating a highly converting offer 
that turns your followers into customers. Customers and cash are the lifeblood of any business. And I can certainly tell you that for my eight years in corporate where I worked in banking and the experience of working with hundreds, if not thousands of entrepreneurs and business owners and certainly being exposed to multiple different accounts and really seeing how important is cash flow. Cash flow is the lifeblood of your business. And where does cash flow come from? It comes from customers. It comes from clients. You can have millions of followers, but if none of them are buying your products, services, or programs, you do not have a business. Your number one priority, my number one priority, is to create a highly converting offer that really solves a specific problem for a specific audience. You know, I'm right in the midst of creating my Unstoppable Entrepreneur online course, which I'm so excited about. It's going to be a game-changing program for entrepreneurs. It's going to be all about implementation. It's going to be all about overcoming the inner barriers and the strategies required to create a phenomenal, highly converting signature program. I cannot wait to get that out there, but that's my number one focus now. It's like high converting offer. You know, using all the strategies I've learned over the last few years to create that program and also create a program that converts. So if you're listening to this now and you've cultivated an audience, what do you need to do to get to the next level when it comes to creating a highly converting offer? Do you need to release your own signature program to take your business to the next level, to take your expertise to the next level, to create transformations to your clients, to create real results for your customers? Think about how you can create that high converting offer. And then number three, this was this just blew my mind when Vince talked about this, is the last five minute of the interview, we're over time. And we just landed upon this conversation around creating a syndicate. And what that means, you know, if you look it up in the uh, Wikipedia, look it up online, it's almost like mafiosa. That's not, that's not the approach we're taking. To, but to create a syndicate, join forces with three or four people on your level in your marketplace, in your industry, in your niche, who all have visions of world domination in their field. And align yourself with those people and promote the heck out of each other. Share each other's content. Share each other's materials. Share each other's offers. Work together to stretch and grow and build a force as a team, as a syndicate in that industry. It's important that you're all going in the same direction. It's important that you all have complementary services or products because there is no real competition. There is no competition if you stand above the competition and you form that united front to take on the world with your content, your materials, your services, your products, your programs, and working together collaboratively to make a real dent in your marketplace. And Trust me, look around. You know, anytime you look at a sales page and look at the testimonials, you'll see familiar faces. They all operate in circles. This is a new concept to me. I hadn't even come across it. I'd come across, of course, the mastermind principle. And, you know, in masterminds, there's tons of people working together to, you know, share their offers and do joint ventures and affiliate promotions and all that kind of stuff. But this very specific principle of syndication, creating a group of four to five of you, three or four people, whatever it is, in the same niche, working together to create world domination. And I freaking love that that, that conversation. It was just mind blowing. It was in the final five minutes when I thought the game was done, Vince pulled out the trump card and landed this great concept and I'm excited. So if you're listening to this right now and you think that you could be partnered with me and in creating world domination with the unstoppable brand and you've got your brand and you want to take it to the next level, I'd love to hear from you because I'm looking to form my own syndicate right now. I'm looking to join forces with people who are looking to help others to create business transformation and life transformation as a result of that business result. You know, for me, it's about lifestyle design. It's about creating a business that creates a massive impact in the world, leaves a legacy, makes a difference, but ultimately, creates the lifestyle for the entrepreneur that is an enviable lifestyle. It's a lifestyle by design. You know, there's so many business owners out there and entrepreneurs who, yes, they get the grind on, they get the hustle on, but they have no lifestyle. They don't get to spend time doing the things they love. Right now I'm in the mountains, overlooking the lake, living the life that I freaking love. I want to surround myself with people who are able to create the impact in the world through their business and also live a lifestyle, especially, you know, most people listen to this podcast, the young people, I'm all in for working absolutely hard and grinding harder than anyone else. I'm 100% into that. 
but I also want to create a lifestyle and enjoy my time on this earth because you don't know how long we have. So I don't want to work so hard that I miss out on life. And, you know, I'm looking to partner with people with this syndication process to really make a dent and help other entrepreneurs create wildly profitable businesses, but also create the time freedom and leverage through their business so they can experience more in life as well. So if you're listening to this and it sounds like you do drop me a line, I'm looking to set up the syndicate over the next coming weeks and find some really awesome partners to, to create world domination with. Cool. Those are my three main takeaways. If you want to see some more notes, go to unstoppablepodcast.com forward slash Vince Del Monte. I put a whole load of lessons that I took from Vince's episode on there in the show notes. So go and have a look and make sure you listen to the episode. The final section of this podcast, five life lessons that I've learned from cycling the Alps. So let me take a sip right now before I dive into it. I've been yabbering away real hard. I'm excited. I'm really excited about this episode. I've got a glass of Garda red wine here, locally produced red wine. And um, interestingly enough, yesterday we just had a casual cycling trip around the um, one side of the lake and we ended up at the Zenny winery. And um, in the tasting room, they had these wines on tap, effectively. They had these little um, dispensers and they had 10 wines. You could just help yourself to a little 20 um, centiliter, uh, sorry, 20 milliliter um, samples and I had four or five of these wine samples and ended up cycling 25 kilometers back to the um, our accommodation and it was excellent fuel I'm not sure if it's legal for me to do that and now that I publicly said it hopefully I don't get in any trouble but it turns out the wine is an excellent fuel but I'm just going to have a little sip of my red wine to hydrate and uh, we're going to jump into the five lessons from cycling through the Alps cheers to you by the way if you're listening in the UK and uh, anywhere else where it's bank holiday happy bank holiday to you uh, so these are my five life lessons from cycling through the Alps. And to give some context, started our trip in Innsbruck in Austria and cycled through to Bressanone across the Italian border through Brenner Pass, which is this incredible mountainous area through the Alps and into Bressanone within Italy. And then from Bressanone, the next day we went to Bolzano, beautiful um, ride through the valleys where you had all these wine um, vineyards and... Um, Wineland and this beautiful lake and the river coming into the Garda, um, and then we cycled from Bonza- uh, sorry Bolzano to Trento, and then finally from Trento into Garda, um, with a number of relatively intense mountainous areas coming into Garda too. Um, but I've got five life lessons that I've learned from this trip, and the first one is to be prepared. Now. I had a really frantic build-up to this trip. I was working to the last minute, really into the early hours of the morning before we came out here, flew out here for the trip. Um, uh, and fortunately, my partner Lizzie had done a lot of the preparation for us, um, which really, really helped, and I'm really grateful for that. But then I had to prepare my gear for the trip, and the weather looked rather uncertain, and we've experienced beautiful sunshine, and we've experienced rain. So I had to prepare for both sets of scenarios. And at one point, when it was sunny all the way through, it looked like I'd over-prepared, and I had all this extra gear. But then, you know what? It starts raining, it gets cold, and I have all this warm weather gear in my luggage. And bear in mind, just to paint the picture for you, the only luggage we have is luggage that we could fit on the bicycles themselves. So we don't have a lot of luggage every single night. I'm washing my clothes so I can wear them the next day. Real basic living. But I had to prepare myself for this both sets of weather. And it paid off. So although I carried the extra weight, this time around it was better because I had all these extra clothes for when it was cold and when it was wet. So how many times have... I faced a situation in my life where I haven't been prepared and it's not worked out. There's been countless times. But on a trip like this and on any venture in life, the better prepared you are, the better result you experience and the better the experience you have throughout that. And I'm not someone who's naturally prepared. I'm a big thinker, I'm an energetic, almost chaotic kind of guy at times. And I need people around me who are uh, integrators, and Vince spoke about that in the previous episode as well, who can help me align the vision with the actual practical steps. But it was so important to prepare for this trip thoroughly so that we had not only the equipment we needed, the tools as well. You had a number of punches on this trip, and I had obviously the tools to take care of those punches. 
But being prepared not only enables a smooth ride, I'm speaking metaphorically now as well, but also enables you to tackle the challenges that you face on a day-to-day basis. So if you're working on a business project right now or you're working on something in your career, what can you do to take your preparation to the next level? Even if it's your daily planning, planning the night before, waking up the next day, reviewing your your to-do list, your most important tasks. How can you better prepare for what you're working on right now? Secondly, most importantly, this has been a driving force through all of the podcast episodes since the very beginning. And having a map, you know, we've cycled some serious kilometers on this trip, but we've needed to know our waypoint every single time. We've needed to know the direction and the clear path to achieving the result, which is arriving on time to our accommodation. Because, you know, we set some ambitious targets to get a certain number of kilometers done or miles for my friends in Europe, in England. And we needed to get there on time. Otherwise, you know, we'd be cycling through the night in the dark. And that's certainly something we didn't want to experience. So having a clear map from A to B, helping us get from our starting point to our finish line has been so, so important. And relating that to life, business, having firstly the vision and then the roadmap, the strategies to get to where you want to get, so important. Vision has been the number one driving force throughout this podcast. Every guest I've had has spoken about having that compelling vision and having a clear roadmap to achieving your goals. So important. And it really brought it to life on this trip. Number three, be ready to face resistance. We faced resistance in a number of formats on this trip. Firstly, from Innsbruck to Bressanone, the hills through the Alps. And it just to, again, to give you some context, this is not summer. It's been warm at times, but we were cycling through the hills in the snow. It was, you know, the snow-lined Alps. So preparation is one thing. Facing resistance is the next thing. And fortunately, we had a number of gears on our bikes that helped us get through these hills. But my God, there was some resistance. And it's about driving hard. Whenever you face resistance in life, which we all do, challenges, frustrations, roadblocks, taking on that resistance and never giving up, no matter how hard it gets, to keep pedaling, to keep pushing. Whenever you face resistance, keep pushing on. You will get where you need to go. It's just a test. Take on the resistance and keep going. The hills are one thing. Unsurprisingly, there was further challenges along the way. The valley through um, from um, Balzano to Trento. My goodness. There was gale force winds for 60 kilometers through this valley. You can imagine this, this cycle path went directly through the middle of this really high valley. So left and right, you've got mountains either side. So you can imagine the, the gusts of wind that were created by this valley. And unfortunately, these winds were coming at us in the headwind, you know, head first for 60 kilometers and seriously high powered wind. So we're cycling into this hardcore wind, which to be honest, was actually harder than the hills through the Alps. And again, it was about just pedaling on and just keep going. So my message on point three here is no matter what resistance you're facing right now or resistance you face in the past or in the future, just keep pedaling, keep pushing, and expect it, expect it. You, we, you know, in business, the amount of challenges I've come across, I've just learned now to expect it and be ready for it, because preparation, anticipation is the best thing that you can do to take on any challenge. Number four, similar to point three, is be ready to face a diversion. You see, we had the map, we prepared, and we knew where we were going, and as we take the trip, We come across a big sign in Italian that makes no sense, but it's quite clear that we cannot go any further on the path that we've chosen. But we didn't lose sight of the vision. We didn't lose sight of the map of where we needed to go. And we simply followed the diversion and took a different path, which still resulted in in arriving at our destination. And for me, how many times in life do you have to take a different path? How many times do you have to take a diversion? Whether you're just starting a business right now and cash flow is important, you might need to take a job to help you get where you want to go. That's just a diversion. Just keep 
the vision in mind, know where you're going, still use the map, but be ready to take on the diversion if necessary. There's tons of curveballs, whether it's resistance, whether it's diversions in life and business, just be ready to take them on and keep facing forward, keep your vision in mind and keep on the path. You can still get there. Number five, you don't stop when you're tired, you stop when you're done. And one of my favorite people, um, Bill Keefe, the fire captain for Tony Robbins, his organization, that was a line I learned from him and it still lives with me today, having worked with Bill on a number of occasions. Don't stop when you're tired, we stop when we're done. And there was countless times on this trip where the legs are tired, the, our inner energy was, was down, and you know, no matter how hard we fueled and how hard we pedaled, we were tired, but we knew we had to reach our destination. And it was important that we kept going, no matter how tired we got, we had to keep going, we had to reach our destination, and we had to get home to our accommodation before it got dark. That was our primary goal. And the resistance, the diversions, whatever we faced, the tiredness, we knew we had to keep going and reach our destination. But how many times in a daily, on a daily basis have you faced tiredness? You've set yourself some objectives, but you get tired. The lesson I've taken from this trip is no matter how tired you get, unless you know you're so tired that you literally, your health's at risk, that's a different story. But on a daily basis, when you're starting to tire and you've still got stuff to do, push on. It's so important. You never know what gonna, you're going to face the next day. Get what you plan to do done that day, no matter how tired you are. Push on. Keep going. And finally, a couple of bonus points linked to the final point. Bonus point number one, fuel for performance. Energy is everything. Energy is everything. Everything we want to achieve in life comes down to how much energy we have in the tank to be able to create it. You know, how tired we feel on a daily basis is down to how much energy we create in our body. Fuel yourself with performance every single day. It doesn't matter if you're cycling through the Alps or taking on your own mountain in your business, raising the bar in your own business, taking on new challenges. Fuel yourself with performance. It's going to change the game. Learn how to feel maximum energy every single day. There's things you can do, there's steps you can take that will maximize your energy and it will take your game to the next level. Next point, bonus point number two. Despite everything I've said about taking on and pushing on and fueling and taking on the resistance, the challenges, diversions, and keep going when you're tired, it's important too to rest. Know when it's important to rest. There'll be times when you have the opportunity to rest during your working day. There'll be times when you have the opportunity to rest during the week. Take that opportunity to use the downtime to refuel to replenish and rest. You know, get seven to eight hours of sleep every single day. No matter what you're doing, no matter what deadlines you've got, make sure you're resting hard because then the next day you can get up, you can fuel for performance and you can get more done. Rest is so important. You've got to let your body recover. You've got to let yourself refuel and replenish. That will enable you to reach the next level of grind, the next level of performance and, you know, take on your own mountain and get things done fast, and it'll enable you to keep going even when you are tired. So finally, to close out this episode, your challenge, your unstoppable challenge for this week. I've been cycling through the mountains, the Alps, alongside rivers, through valleys, through hills, through straits, all kinds of terrain. Your challenge for this week is to find your mountain. What are you going to conquer this week? What mountain will you climb? I'm not talking physically, although you can if you like. I'm talking about your business this week. How high can you set the bar? How high can you go? How far can you go this week? I'm challenging you to set a challenge beyond any challenge this week and really raise the standard and climb your mountain. Take on your mountain this week. Set an astronomical goal and keep going no matter how tired you get, face the resistance, take on the diversions, don't stop, fuel yourself, rest hard, be prepared and have a map. Take on your mountain this week. Identify your mountain and take it on. 
Come over to theunstoppablepodcast.com and let me know what your challenge is going to be. I'm here to support you. Come and join the Unstoppable Mastermind on Facebook where you'll join a like-minded community of people who are all goal, um, goal setters, visionaries, people who want to achieve more in life and create a life by design. People who want to create businesses that fuel uh, an incredible lifestyle. Come and join the community. Come and share your goals. Take on your mountain this week. I do appreciate every single listener of the Unstoppable World Podcast. If you found value today, please do share this episode. Please subscribe to ensure that you receive the next episodes coming up. I've got some amazing guests lined up. Uh, do check out the previous episodes of some of the brilliant guests I've had so far. Thank you so much for listening today. All the best. Until next time, unleash your greatness. Ignite your movement. Go out there and build your empire. You are unstoppable. Ciao for now.